Hi, my name is Tiffany and I'm the dyer and maker behind Lita Valley Fiber Co. On this week's episode, I talk about finished objects, current whips that I'm working on, and some future cast-ons. So if that interests you, let's just jump right in. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it is a hot, somewhat humid um, day today in uh, Eastern Washington. And um, I'm not gonna complain because I do like summer and the heat, um, but I'm working at getting my garden in and you know, there's a lot of prep for that. Uh, weeding and rototilling the garden area. So um, kind of in the midst of that, trying to get that planted. And then, um, yeah, moving on to the next thing. <laughs> um, so I hope you are all well and working on wonderful projects. I was kind of curious, and you'll have to say in the comments, whether you're going to knit during the summer, um, be that a wool item or cotton item. And the reason I'm thinking that, because number one, it's hot, um, it's about 85 today, um, and I, I've been knitting wool, and I've been knitting a cotton project, and I really can't tell the difference. <laughs> I get hot either way, so put down in the comments what you prefer to knit on um, in the summertime. Um, we would all like to know. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and jump into, um, oh, <laughs> shop news. Let's do shop news first because it'll be short and brief. I am running a sale between now and the end of May. It's my Memorial Day sale. And it is 20% off, $75 or more. Um, so there's a lot of great items in there if you're interested and you've been waiting or they've been in your cart and you've been waffling back and forth because yarn is expensive <laughs> and um, I certainly understand the um, do I buy it or do I wait until my birthday <laughs> so um, anyway I thought that would help I am having a sale if you're interested you can go check that out uh, Leita Valley Fiber Co. at Etsy.com. Okay, so I, <laughs> I double checked my shop. You um, don't have to put in a code. It just, when you're at $75, it'll take 20% off. Um, so there you go. I hope um, you enjoy that sale. Okay, that's it for shop news. Um, let's talk about finished objects. I have two finished objects. Well, one is a completely finished object and the other one is a half finished object. The first one is this hat. This is a pattern that I've used before. Now this is Malabrigo Noventa. I've done multiple hats in this yarn and I like it. There's just enough hat. It's a bulky weight yarn, so there's just enough yarn to do a hat and maybe have a little leftover, but not too much. So I do like that. Now this pattern is by Crazy Hands Knit and Crochet. She's on YouTube. It's a free pattern. It's a tutorial actually, and she walks you through it step by step. So that's kind of fun. This pattern I've done several times. I have a purple hat that I did it in as well. And um, it's called the Raindrops Bulky Knit Hat, I think. So. This one is in pink, and actually I like this stitch because it's super easy to do, um, and it adds some interest to the hat versus just a basic stockinette stitch. So that is, I've only completed one, and I do have um, two more skeins of that uh, Malabrigo Noventa in these darker colors. So I will probably do a different pattern um, with the darker, although maybe it would show up. It probably would, um, but I, 
you know, it's fun to change it up too. So I might try and find a different pattern for these too. And I am gonna hold off posting these on to my shop, mainly because we're going into summer and um, I have seven hats on there right now and there's not been a whole lot of movement and I can completely understand that. It, we're going into summer and it's hot. So I will um, keep these ones around for a bit and then probably post them in September. And so anyway, that's that. <laughs> um, the next object I have is a half object. And um, in last week's episode, uh, I was prepping for my husband's birthday and told him not to look. And of course he watched it the entire thing and he looked anyway. <laughs> so um, he's not surprised, but you know, he likes uh, hand knit socks. So um, he'll appreciate these either way, even if he knows that they're coming. So this yarn is, um, hold on. <laughs> okay, this yarn is Patton's Croy Socks FX, it looks like. And each ball is 50 grams which is enough to do one sock. Um, so I had to buy two balls, which is actually, this is a good price point. It's a very hard working sock yarn. So I know it's durable. I think I got this at Joann's and it was maybe $5.99. So this particular colorway is called Clover. So not sure why because it doesn't look like a clover um so my son picked out the color and i just chose um a regular knit um it's called a vanilla sock um pattern so um i felt like the color you really shouldn't do up pattern with the type of color that this is because it would just get lost so um I didn't do that I did just a vanilla and I didn't do contrasting toe heel and cuff I just did it all together because I wanted to use all of the yarn and this is not blocked yet so it's sliding around but okay for the toe I did my normal toe I cast on 24 stitches on two needles and then I increased with a, the increase I like that doesn't leave holes is the um, knit front and back. So in one stitch, you knit through the front loop and then you slide it around and knit through the back loop before you pull that stitch off the needle. So that increases it once. And you do that, um, you do it four times per round. So I'm not sure how many rounds it takes to get to the full. I, I try to get to, for a man's sock, um, 72 stitches generally. But somehow I didn't increase um, correctly. So I only had 70 stitches <laughs> by the time I got to um, finishing the toe you know so I just went well 70 72 it's probably not that big of a deal so I just went with it um, and since I'm not doing a pattern it didn't really matter I felt like um, so I knit um, to four inches and then I added this ribbing along the bottom so that it would cinch in around my husband's foot um, nicely and then I did my normal heel, which is a shadow wrapped heel. And you know, I, I've been doing this heel for a long time. And um, I was watching a podcaster, can't remember who it was, talking about the shadow wrapped heel and how it leaves a ridge on the inside of the heel. 
And so if you have a sensitivity to um, texture um, or pressure on your heel while your sock is in a shoe, then that may bother you. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, well, it hasn't bothered me at all. I, I didn't even notice the ridge. Um, but I do knit for my dad who has some sensitivities um, with uh, ridges and uh, seams and things like that. And I've used this heel on his socks. So dad, you will have to let me know um, if that actually bothers you or not. And I'll show you um, what it looks like. Uh, so this is the outside and it's beautiful. There's no holes. There's no ridge on this side, but on the inside, there's a ridge right here. And, um, you know, I, like I said, it doesn't bother me, but it, the gal said it um, might bother you if you have a sensitivity to that so um, but anyway I I like the shadow wrap because it leaves no holes it's very easy to do I don't have to look at a pattern or anything I can just um, I know how to do it and um, that's the end of it <laughs> which is nice uh, well so I'm thinking specifically of like the heel flap and gusset I have to follow that step by step because um, it's a more difficult heel. Uh, anyway, okay, so I finished the heel and picked up again for knitting in the round. And the at that point I thought, uh, you know, I'm going to increase to the seven from 70 stitches to the 72 stitches that it should be because I didn't want this to be tight around my husband's leg. And honestly, I thought I would have more yarn to go up onto his calf a little bit more, but that wasn't the case. Um, I don't think this will go much over his ankle. So that's something that, um, you know, I probably didn't need to increase, I guess is my point. Okay, then I did a two by two rib for two and a half inches. Well, just until um, the yarn ran out and then I bound off. So I did a stretchy bind off uh, so that he could get it over his heel and onto his foot. Um, yeah, so that's it for my husband's socks. His birthday is in a week. Um, Nope, it's not. What's today? Today is the 18th, so his birthday is coming up in a couple days. Um, so I need to get started on the other sock. Um, so this is my half finished object. Okay, um, that's it for knitting. I do have a crochet project that I'm working on. And again, this is for Joanna. So Joanna, if you're watching and you don't want a sneak peek, turn away now. <laughs> okay, so this is a crocheted um, uh, market bag. And the yarn I am using is a cotton yarn by Lion Brand. And it is called uh, Lion Brand Pima Cotton Yarn. This is the colorway blueprint. And um, it is 100 grams per ball. I bought four balls thinking I might need that. Um, but I'm not sure that I'm going to. I am into the second ball of yarn, but I have, you know, quite a bit left still, which will probably get me through the rest of the length of the bag before I start the handles. So I could possibly do two bags out of the four skeins. Um, 
did I say this already? It's 100% cotton and you can wash it in the machine and it's dryable. Machine, washable, and dryable, which is what I wanted um, for her to be able to do. So this pattern is, I found it on Pinterest and it is called the Crochet Market Bag by Stitchberry, stitchberryblog.com and I will post a picture here of what it looks like. Um, they have their um, pattern pictures in this lovely mustardy yellow color. Um, so that is the designer. Oh, it's a free pattern on her blog. So, and it's really simple to um, follow. I didn't find that I had any problems reading her pattern and I haven't crocheted in a while actually. Um, so there you go, crochet, it's pretty easy. Um, I am using a size five millimeter crochet hook, which is an H. Um, so it wasn't quite what she had in the pattern, but it went with the yarn that I had. So I just kind of modified. Um, she has you cast on 108 or chain, <laughs> different terminology for different um, yarning and knitting, or not yarning. Knitting and crochet. Um, so she has you cast chain 108 stitches, and then that's the, and then um, so when you chain, you're just looping, um, and then you join it in the round when you get to the 108, and then you do single crochets in the round for. Um, she has you do nine rounds, um, which is the bottom of the bag. So I'll show you what that is now. Um, so this is the bottom of the bag here and it's open as you can see. So at the end, once you've knit the length, which is 13 inches from the cast on edge, then you come back, oh no, you do the handles first and then you come back and you um, sew this together and then you do kind of an interesting you fold so it's uh, of course I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate but you you get a peak and so then you fold it like this um, so you have a nice flat edge, which I thought was a cool feature instead of just it being, you know, this is a sh small flat edge. Whereas if you tuck it like that, then your, your edging or your, the bottom of your bag is going to be nice and flat. So I'm not quite there yet. Obviously I'm still doing the pattern for the bag. Um, and this is actually, um, again, I'm using a smaller, a smaller hook. So I ended up casting on 113, or is it 16, um, stitches and then joining in the round because it was, you know, although it probably wouldn't made, wouldn't, if I'd done 108, it wouldn't have made much of a difference, but I'm using a smaller needle, so I didn't want a smaller bag. Anyway, this patterning, so this is, um, this is single crochet here on the, for the bottom of the bag, and then this patterning is done with double crochet, and it's called a, um, this specific pattern where you can see it's kind of going up at an angle like this. So you crochet two stitches ahead and then you go back and crochet the first one. So it crosses over and makes this nice uh, design. 
So I thought that was a cool feature. And it's really, I mean, you don't even have to look at the patterning uh, or at the, um, you don't have to look at the pattern. Um, now you just, it's so intuitive. You're just crochet, crochet, back and forth, you know, back and around, 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 because you're doing it in the round. And then um, you're just trying to get to 13 inches before um, you need to look at the pattern again to s decide um, or to do go to the next step of the handles. So I thought that was, um, it's a nice bag. I might want to make one for myself. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so Joanna, there you go. Um, this should be done by, well that's the other thing about crochet, is if you slip a stitch, it's really easy to just pick it back up and carry on. Whereas in knitting, if you drop a stitch, oh, it's a, yeah, it's a big process to get that stitch back on the needle. So, yep. Okay, so that is my uh, work in progress. And I should, I knit on it every day, um, and it goes pretty quick. So, I, and I'm almost, um, I am at nine and a half inches. So, yeah, just a couple more to go, a couple more inches. And two rounds is pretty much an inch. It's just shy of an inch. So, a few more rounds and I'll be there, ready to put on the handles. So, yeah, that's exciting. And this actually, so I started with crochet and moved away from it to do some knitting, to learn knitting. And um, knitting for me is a little faster um, than crochet, but crochet you, it's a little slower, but you get more when you're doing it. Unless you're doing doing single crochet. If you're doing single crochet, you're not getting as much fabric. But like the double crochet, a two rounds and I have an inch. Whereas in knitting, it would be five or six rounds, maybe even eight before I had an inch. So... There you go. So I am liking it actually quite a bit. For many of you, it was Mother's Day this last weekend and we spent time uh, together as a family with my husband's extended family. So um, that was nice. And um, yeah, it was a really good time. My um, son and husband um, got me yarn, <laughs> of course in two of my favorite colors um, and they went to my local yarn shop which is Paradise Fiber here in Spokane Washington and um, I love it there you walk in and you just smell yarn <laughs> it's lovely and they have a lot of options so my husband picked out um, this is Malabrigo Ultimate Sock, so it's in fingering weight. And is this one the same? Yes, this is Ultimate Sock as well, Malabrigo. So the first color here is Caramel. Yes, I love burnt orange. It's my favorite color. And then um, this gray is called Gris. And um, so he said, now, my husband said, now these are socks for you. You need to knit yourself a pair of socks. <laughs> so I am going to do that at some point. I will put that on the um, agenda. I might do it over the summer because socks are really easy. They don't sit heavy on your lap like a blanket or a um, pullover or a cardigan or anything like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I do enjoy doing socks over the summer to keep up my knitting. Um, yeah. So thank you, hubby and Hudson, my son, for, um, my Mother's Day gift. <laughs> that was very sweet of you guys. 
Um, I did want to talk about future knitting a little bit and over, mm, actually it's been a couple weeks ago, I bought two patterns. Actually, one of the patterns was free and I felt like supporting the designer, so I bought another one of her patterns <laughs> and I'll post some pictures here. Um, I would like to do uh, Knitty McPurley's Vesper. Uh, sweater which is kind of a bat wing um, you can see by the pictures it's a little bit of a bat wing um, tucked in at the waist um, construction it's knit with fingering weight yarn and mohair or surrey silk so sorry silk sorry silk surrey silk <laughs> um, so I already bought the mohair for it and I have some of my own hand dyed yarn that I would like to pair for the fingering weight and uh, so I'm really excited to do that one. I'd love to have it for this fall and winter. I have not worn mohair around my body. I've had it in a hat and it's pretty warm for being a lace weight yarn, it's pretty warm. So um, anyway, I thought this pattern was beautiful and I've actually been watching her, uh, Devin, through the process of designing it and then test knitting it and here it is. She's um, uh, putting it out there for free. So I, I wanted to support her and there's another pattern that I've been looking at actually she has several <laughs> but I'm in the market for a new cardigan I have a cardigan that is one of the first items uh, garments that I knit and it's by Andrea Mowry it's called the faded cardi and I love that cardigan but I made a lot of newbie mistakes um, because it was my first garment and um, I didn't use the right yarn <laughs> I didn't check for gauge so it's small um, and the I used the wrong yarn for it completely so it hangs terribly there's no structure to it at all it is short in the back and long in the front because that cardigan you you knit back and forth or you might knit and purl I'm not sure but um, you knit the main body of it and then you pick up stitches along um, the the neck and down the front and so you pick up however many stitches and then you knit like this as you're going along. And I used the same yarn as I did for the body, but it drapes funny. <laughs> so anyway, I've worn it anyway. I It was my first project, I loved it. Oh, and there were a lot of holes where I connected the sleeve to the body. <laughs> but I loved it, I wore it. Um, but the, that that being said, I am in the market uh, and have been kind of for a while about needing a new cardigan and um, I wanted to use some of my own hand dyed yarn. So I, um, I picked out Knitty McPurley's um, cardigan. It's in worsted weight. It is the... Potomac worsted and it's a longer cardigan which I like because I can wear it with my dresses and it doesn't hit at a funny so that's the other thing about the one that I knit um, the one from Andrea Mowry um, I you know it's my first pattern and I was not very gifted at reading patterns actually and so, you know, I just made a lot of mistakes. Um, but it wasn't, it, it's not long enough, so it hits kind of in a funny spot uh, regardless. Actually, if I'm wearing jeans, it's okay. Um, 
but still it's so small that it just it doesn't do well so anyway look at this picture of the Potomac worsted um, by Nitty McPurley so that's the other pattern that I bought and this one has pockets which is super cute I haven't actually done uh, pockets on have I done pockets on any of my nope no I have zero pockets on any of my pullovers um, or cardigans but I only no I, I do have two cardigans I have another one it's the Mema by Pip and Pin but that's a lightweight cardigan and it's short sleeved and it's a lighter material so well fingering weight um, and it is um, great for um, the summer too so because it's short sleeve so um, yeah but it doesn't have pockets either so this one has pockets so I'm excited about that figuring out how that's a new new technique to me um, so that'll be fun all right that's all I have for future knitting I would like to do that during the summer so that I can have it this coming fall and um, I haven't done any spinning. Last week I was working on blending alpaca and Shetland together, um, or merino. Sh <sighs> might not be Shetland, might be merino. I will have to look at that and post it down below. Um, so I had a comment about why I might have been having some trouble getting the fiber from the liquorin, which feeds it on to the big drum. And um, that comment was by my husband. And he said that the, um, the needles that are on my liquorin and big drum are for coarser uh, fibers. And so with this delicate fiber, it's just, not doing well so um, I can either buy another drum actually not buy another build another drum I had to buy all the stuff to put it together but um, build another drum with that um, set for a fine a finer um, fiber or I can hand card it, which I might demonstrate that. So I have other fiber back here too that's ready to go. And um, But you know, I have other projects that I'm working on, so that's gonna have to wait uh, for a little bit. And now would be a good time to um, prepare that fleece that I have in the garage, washing it, drying it, it's been warm enough. so drying it and then getting it carted up and ready to go. So I have a lot on my plate actually, <laughs> but, or it's on the back burner, but it's not forward yet. So it needs to maybe work its way forward, but okay. I think that's it for today, guys. It's, um, I thought it was going to be short and here it's going to be about 40 minutes. So um, I hope you all have a lovely day and enjoy your weekend with your families, um, with whatever you're doing, crafting, or just um, doing stuff together as a family. I hope you have a, a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. Have a great day.